Okay, so chapter four review number fifty-four. Okay. Um we have y equals the square root of two minus x cubed. Okay. Um, when I'm doing these problems, the first thing I always um, think about is the domain before I even start on these. So um, the domain of this function is that 2 minus x cubed has to be greater than or equal to 0, which means that x cubed has to be greater than or equal to um, 2, right? Because I'll, I'll move the, well, sorry, let me be more careful. So I have uh, negative x cubed is greater than or equal to negative 2. And so that means x cubed, when I divide through by negative 1, it has to be less than or equal to 2. Because um, I can't take the cube root. If my cube number is bigger, then I'll have a negative, and that'll be, that won't work. And so x has to be less than or equal to the cube root of 2. So your domain on this function is from negative infinity to the cube root of 2. And you can include, you can include, like that. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and take our derivative. So we would write this as 2 minus x to the third power to the 1 half. So this is 1 half, 2 minus x to the third power to the 1 half minus 1, which is to the negative 1 half, times the derivative inside, which is, uh, negative 3x squared. So you would write this as negative 3x squared over the square root of um, 2 on the square root of 2 minus x cubed. That's your derivative. Now um, your derivative is not going to be defined at the cube root of 2. You're going to have, you're actually going to have a a vertical tangent there because that's going to make the denominator zero. So that is a critical point. It's also an endpoint of the domain. The other critical point is where the numerator equals zero. So when negative three x squared equals zero, that's just going to be obviously when x equals zero. So um, you have zero and then you have the cube root of two and you're going to look at your first derivative and find values there. Um, if you pick a number, uh, uh, does anybody, what, does anybody see anything that, it, what appears to be true here? Does anybody want to say anything about the derivative? the value of the derivative. Okay, if you pick a number less than zero, will you get a negative or a positive in your derivative? Yeah, you're going to get a negative. And then it, t it turns out, though, if you pick a number between zero and the cube root of two, you're also going to get a negative, right? Because you're squaring, you've got that x squared, and, you know, of course the denominator is always positive, so it's going to be negative three times positive value, so it's going to be negative two also negative as well. So this is, um, this function is always um, decreasing. Or sorry, it's decreasing from negative infinity to the cube root of two. Okay, um, let's look at our second derivative. Now, to look at the second derivative, I, I, it's up to you. Would you guys prefer to use the quotient rule or the chain rule? The chain rule? I mean, the, sorry, the quotient rule or the product rule? The product. I guess you're saying the product rule. Um, yeah, like, let me look at this. If I were going to do this derivative, I would put the negative 3 halves in front and then... I feel like this x squared should be in front too. It just feels better to the negative one half. 
So like this is my U and this is my V. And I'll just use the product rule. So um, derivative of the first is going to be the two comes in front, we'll cancel with that two. So this is negative three x times the second, two minus x cubed to the negative one half, plus the derivative of the second, which is negative one half, two minus x cubed to the negative one half minus one, which is negative three halves, times the derivative of the inside, which is negative three x squared, times the first, which is negative three halves x squared. So this is like negative 3x over the square root of 2 minus x cubed plus, or will it be, it'll be a minus uh, 9 fourths, and you'll have x to the fourth, and then you'll have 2 minus x cubed to the 3 halves in the denominator. So you have to get a common denominator, um, which is going to be, you need to multiply, the common denominator is going to be 4 times 2 minus x to the third to the 3 halves. You need to multiply this one by 4 times 2 minus x cubed on top and bottom, because that's a whole, and this is to the half power, and so a whole plus a half makes the three halves. So you will have the three halves in the denominator. And so this is going to make negative uh, 12x times 2 minus x cubed minus 9x to the fourth all over this stuff, which is 4 times 2 minus x cubed to the three halves. And so the numerator cleans up to be negative 24x plus 12x to the fourth minus 9x to the fourth all over this stuff. And so all we have to do is figure out where the numerator is equal to zero because the problem with the denominator is still with that domain, so we don't have to worry about that. And uh, it's taken care of by the domain. So I'm going to do negative 24x, let's see, nine take, uh, 12 take away 9 is 3. So this is going to be plus 3x to the fourth equals 0. So we can factor 3x out of that, and I'll get negative 8 plus x to the third equals 0. So we get 3x equals 0 or x equal, uh, negative 8x, negative 8 plus x cubed equals 0. So x is going to be the cube root of 8, which is 2, or x equals 0. So those are your possible points of inflection. So you'll put those on the number line, 0, 2, and you're going to be looking at your second derivative. See, here is our, our second derivative cleaned up was this negative 24x plus 3x to the fourth over this thing. But I think 2 is not in your domain, is it? Is 2 in your domain? No, because it stopped at the cube root of 2. So you don't have to worry about that one. You only have to worry about zero. Okay, so if we pick a number to the left of zero, what will our second derivative be? Positive or negative? I'm feeling positive. Are y'all? Yeah? Okay. Like if you put negative 1 in there, that'll make that positive, and of course that's positive, and your denominator is positive. Okay. Now, a number between 0 and the cube root of 2, <coughs> what's the cube root of 2? Like, did y'all figure it out? Mm -hmm. 
1.26. Right. Or, okay, so if you if you put 1 in there, um, will you get a positive or a negative? We'll get a negative. So this is going to be concave up and then concave down for S. So you have a point of inflection at x equals 0. And what else did we determine? That this function was always, always decreasing. Okay. Um, so you might want to I don't know. You know, you have your calculator, so you don't have to kill yourself with these problems, right? <laughs> 2 minus, you might want to just see if it verifies what you're thinking. Um, if you go to the graph, let's see, zoom. Probably zoom 4 would be good. See, it's an interesting graph because it stops right at that one that cube root of 2, which was 1.26 or so. And so you can't really see that on the graph, but um, notice that it is concave up, and then it changes to concave down. And, and do you see the flattening that occurs? That was from where our first derivative, we did have a critical, that where we thought, thought we had a critical number at 0, but it didn't end up changing. It was always decreasing, but it flattened. And then, so this is kind of what the graph is going to look like, which is verified by... Our, our calculations. The one thing is that it does sort of, it does continue to write there at that 1.25. It's just that we don't have very many pixels on our calculator. So we can't. It's an interesting graph. Okay. Another question? I'm also in a quiet space. I think we're done. Okay. I meant like physically, like done, like you just can't take it anymore. What is it? Number 66. Yes. You want me to do it? Oh. It doesn't look that quick.